What's going on everybody? It's the Bull Show, aka Aiden, and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be discussing more of your trade scenarios and just typical suggestions that you would bring to the Chicago Bulls team. Now, at the end of the day, still hypothetical scenarios, no guarantees that any of these things will happen, but I got a lot of responses from my last video, which does suggest that you guys sort of liked what I was doing in that last video, and I'll continue to do it until obviously there are no suggestions left. I do also have to give a warning, there's a fairly decent chance chance I might not get to everybody's suggestions because it will be a very long video. I don't want to make this video ridiculously long. Before we get started, please like and subscribe to The Bull Show. Turn notifications on and let me know in the comments below your thoughts about all the trade scenarios and typical suggestions that you feel would be good for the Chicago Bulls and of course reacting to everybody else's as well. It's all opinion based. No one's right. No one's wrong. Most of the time, I don't think we're even going to see a trade heading into the start of the season. But again, just to give people a little bit of creativity and try to get more people involved in this channel, I do feel like that's a big positive out of making these videos. So we're going to get started. The first trade I want to talk about is a very interesting trade with the San Antonio Spurs in which the Chicago Bulls would give up Kobe White and Marco Semenovic for Jakopodal and Joshua Primo, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I believe Joshua Primo is in his first NBA season. Um, obviously, last season, he's entering his second season as well. Didn't do too badly. Different position compared to Kobe White at 6 for 6 as well. Um, an interesting player. Someone that, again, I would very much like to give a chance on on this team, but I think if you're looking at the statistics of both of those players, Kobe White probably had the better statistics, and you also got Jakopodal there. That is probably better than Marcus Aminovic. So I've got to be honest, in terms of this trade, I actually think we kind of win this trade, but there are so many scenarios as to why this trade might not work. For example, we already have three centers, four centers on this team already. Uh, it, it, realistically, you've got Nikola Vucevic, who's going to be the starting center. Andre Drummond, who's most definitely going to be the backup center. You've got Tony Bradley, that's considered the third choice center as well. And you even got Marco Semenovic, that's been, in my opinion, needs a spot on this team, either as a power forward, pretty much as the power forward, in my opinion. And it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So... We've got four centers there fighting for spots. And Jakopodal, I don't think, would be very happy with either the third choice center position or the um, the fourth choice center position. You're assuming that you're getting rid of Marco here. So he's probably going to be the third choice center ahead of Andre Drummond. Maybe he starts over Andre Drummond. He's the backup center. But then you're going to get a relatively unhappy Andre Drummond as well. I think we just have too many centers at this point in time to bring in a Jakopodal on this team. I really do think we would win the trade if we ended up pulling this trade off. I've got to be honest, but I just don't think it makes sense for the Chicago Bulls at the moment. If we did assign Andre Drummond and we tried to pull this trade off, I think it works tremendously well. Uh, but unfortunately, it's just not the case. I don't think that trade makes sense anymore for this Chicago Bulls team. So we'll quickly move on from that one. I do think it's a good trade. I think if, if this trade was done months ago, or I guess a month ago, we, it would have been a good trade. But we signed Andre Drummond. I just don't think it makes sense anymore. We'll move on into the next one, ladies and gentlemen. And I have a lot to say about this one. I kind of want to get your opinion on this and whether or not you think we are giving too much for this type of player. So this trade, obviously, once again, involves Kobe White, but it also involves our mid-level exception for, and two draft picks, I should mention as well, for Jonathan Isaac, ladies and gentlemen. Jonathan Isaac is a player that, again, if you're looking for a defensive-minded forward, I don't think you get much better than Jonathan Isaac. Again, he hasn't played 2020, he hasn't played the last two years, let's put it that way. So that's definitely something you've got to keep an eye on. Um, the fact that he has been injured for two straight seasons now. Very similar to TJ Warren. Remember, TJ Warren has been out for the majority of two years and he's struggling to get an NBA contract. So with all that being said, there is a big risk for getting Jonathan Isaac knowing that he has an injury record that has kept him out for two straight seasons. No games played whatsoever. I'm hoping he'll have a good year next year for the Orlando Magic, but I do feel like there is a little bit too much for Jonathan Isaac there, in my opinion. I think Jonathan Isaac is a risky player. What you get with the positives out of Jonathan Isaac makes so much sense. Defensively, a really strong character, really good rebounder. He averages 11.9 points as well. Good rim protector, good at steals. Very, very good defensive-minded player. Probably one of the best in the league, in my opinion. But the risk there is, is he going to be the same player when he returns? 
He already has um, trouble scoring, in my opinion. He's 11.9 points per game. He's not a great jump shooter, in my opinion. He's mainly going to be a guy that gets his points through pick and rolls and through attacking the paint and stuff like that. That's where his points come from. But defensively is where you get the key there. Defensively, he's a fantastic player, but is he going to be the same player? And I think... We're going to get rid of Kobe White. Makes sense, in my opinion, to do that. But the mid-level exception as well, probably not the biggest thing in the world. But two first-round picks, or it, it was considered draft picks, but I'm assuming it's two first-round two first round picks. I don't think Jonathan Isaac is worth all that much, to be honest. That's just my opinion. I'd love to know what you guys think about that, because I really like Jonathan Isaac. I can't lie. I think he's a very good defensive player. I just don't think that we would give up that much for Jonathan Isaac. I don't think we would give up two first-round picks, the rest of our mid-level exception, and Kobe White. I don't see that happening. So, again, that's my two cents on the situation. Let me know in the comments below what you think about that trade. I'm really intrigued to see what you guys have to say about that one. So, the next one, again, there's a lot of Kobe White. So, if you're if you're a Kobe White fan, I do apologize. I understand that Kobe White's probably going to be here at the start of the season, and it makes a lot of sense. I'm happy Kobe White's going to get his chance, but these are all trade scenarios. These are all hypothetical situations, so I hope you don't take them too seriously. Kobe White and a first-round pick for Rashad Holmes, ladies and gentlemen. I say this guy's name differently every time I talk about him, but plays for the Sacramento Kings. Uh, the Kings do have... A hefty amount of centers. Uh, Rashad Holmes is always someone that I feel like many Chicago Bulls fans wanted on this team. It's very similar to the, what I've been saying with um, Jakobodal. Holmes can probably play as a power forward. He's kind of a small ball type center, kind of like a, a Montrez Harrell type player. And that makes a lot of sense. He's a, he's a little, little bit of a bully. He's a good rebounder. He plays very physical. Uh, as he said, he's a beast. He is a beast player. But again, if we're going to see him play center, I don't see the point in doing that. I don't think we need another center on this team unless we're trading a center as well. So you got to look at all these things. And unless he's going to be playing power forward on this team, I don't see that working. If he's playing power forward, I would consider this, to be honest. But if he's just going to be here to play center, I don't see the value in bringing Richard Holmes to the Chicago Bulls at the moment. We'll wait and see what turns up. We'll wait and see, I guess, what happens. But moving into the next one, this is a really huge trade, ladies and gentlemen. A massive trade. Um, and to be honest, I don't really know how I'm going to fit all of this in a, uh, a photo or anything like that. So I'll basically just tell you what it is. The, the it's going to be a four-team trade involving the Bulls, the Knicks, the Kings, and the Jazz. Chicago gets Julius Randle and Clint Capella. Atlanta get Nikola Vucevic, Harrison Barnes, Terrence Ross. New York gets Donovan Mitchell, Jordan Clarkson, Patrick Williams, Javante Green, and Trey Lyles. Sacramento get John Collins, Kobe White, Tony Bradley, uh, Jalen Johnson, and uh, Utah get, I think, nine first-round picks. Toppin, Quinton Grimes, Cam Reddish, Evan Fournier, Rashad Holmes. That is the four-team trade right there. There's a lot of moving parts there, ladies and gentlemen. But basically, if you're focusing on the bull side of things, which is what I'm going to be personally doing, we get Julius Randle and Clint Capella. Two players that are probably ready now. Two players that are going to be very physical type of players. And obviously, we will be getting rid of Nikola Vucevic. We'll be getting rid of Patrick Williams. We'll be getting rid of Kobe White. We'll be getting rid of Tony Bradley. And I think that's all that we're getting rid of. So I've got to be honest, straight from the get-go, Julius Randle and Clint Capella on this team, alongside of DeMar DeRozan, will really screw up the, sp the spacing of this team from the very beginning. So if I was the Chicago Bulls looking to do a 14 trade like this, I would, ha I would honestly pick between Randle or Capella. I think both of them would do well on this team, but both of them together alongside of DeRozan, there's a, lot of, there's a lack of three-point shooting there. The only real significant three-point shooters in the starting lineup would be Lonzo Ball and Zach Levine. DeMar can make open ones, of course, but he's not known for three-point shooting. Julius Randle's not a great three-point shooter, and obviously Clint Capella, pretty much anything outside of the paint he's not going to make. Even his free throw is not a good percentage there. And even some of the backup centers as well with Andre Drummond, you got very similar players there as well. What I like about the, I guess, Vucevic and, and Andre Drummond, they're different players. So you get different things out of them. You get more physicality with Andre Drummond. You get more offensive spacing with Nikola Vucevic. You get someone that can do pick and pops. You get someone that has very good post moves as well. 
Although he missed a lot of his threes, you also get that with Nikola Vucevic. I don't think I would do this deal. You're looking at Patrick Williams as well going to the New York Knicks. New York also get Don, um, Donovan Mitchell as well. So that's very big for the for um, the New York Knicks. But yeah, I don't know if the Chicago Bulls are necessarily winning this trade. I think on paper, you look at the players, Julius Randle, Clint Capella. Those are two great players. You might be able to find a way to work around those two. But I don't think that's going to really work in terms of spacing. I think we're going to see... A very similar situation when we had Rondo, Wade, and Butler as our big starting three. None of them could really shoot the ball. You've got Ball and Levine that can. DeRozan can make open ones. I don't see Randall as a great three-point shooter. I don't see Clint Capella really making anything outside of lobs and in the paint type of stuff. So I personally would say no, and I don't agree with giving up Patrick Williams either for a Julius Randle type player. I don't know Julius Randle's contract, but I don't think it's a very long one as well. And Patrick Williams does have a lot of potential. So I would say no to this type of deal. I'm not really going to focus on what the Knicks get. Obviously, the Knicks win as well because they get Donovan Mitchell. The Hawks will get Vucevic, which probably would help their offensive game a little bit more to someone that can score off of Victor Roll a little bit more than what Clint Capella can. It makes sense for the Atlanta Hawks. Um, and, the, and the Sacramento Kings gets pretty much, uh, they get Kobe White, which is a backup point guard for them. Uh, not too bad whatsoever. I kind of like the idea. I think it's a lot of creativity there, but I just feel like the first thing I noticed was spacing. And I don't think the spacing works with that team. I've got to be honest. It could prove me wrong, but uh, I, I just don't see that being really good for the Chicago Bulls team. The next and last trade I'm going to talk about in relation to this video is a Bulls Atlanta Hawks trade in which the Chicago Bulls give up DeMar DeRozan for Atlanta Hawks John Collins and two first round picks. This is a pretty interesting one. And I've got to be honest, when I first saw this trade, um, I think at the end of the day, you got to look at some of the negatives that does come with John Collins. DeMar DeRozan is the better player now. If the Bulls are trying to compete now with the team that we have, the continuity that we want, we wouldn't do this trade. But I've got to be honest, in a year's time, I think this trade could be very interesting. Right now, I would say no to this trade because... We've not seen a healthy John Collins for a long, long time. So once again, it's another risk getting John Collins onto this team, knowing full well that there's a high chance that he will miss a lot of game time. The one positive thing about DeMar DeRozan, you can question his ability to play team ball. You can question the fact that he always likes to play isolation, even though he's had a great season, great statistics and all of that. He's better than John Collins as well. But what you get with DeMar DeRozan, you get a healthy DeMar DeRozan. You get DeMar DeRozan that's going to play a lot of games for the Chicago Bulls. And he's done that throughout the whole of his career. He's played a lot of games for every place he's been to. He's very rarely gotten hurt, very rarely missed time. John Collins, on the other hand, has played most of his seasons. He's had games where he's missed. I think his first season, he played 74 games. He played 61 the next, 41 only the season after that. 63 the season after that and only 53 this season as well so again a lot of missed games and we kind of already have a player that we're dealing with that in Lonzo Ball and look how that's turning out for the Chicago Bulls at the moment we're hoping Lonzo Ball gets healthy because when he's playing he's an amazing player but the problem is can he stay healthy how can the Bulls improve Lonzo Ball's health how can we manage him a little bit better so he's healthy when it really comes to count in the NBA playoffs we're trying to figure that out at the moment with DeMar DeRozan, you don't need to figure anything out there. He's always, or at least I hope I don't jinx it, but he's a guy that has been, for the most part, a very healthy player at the NBA level. And he is better than John Collins as well. So if you're looking at this season, I would say no to this. But in a year's time, let John Collins play. See how long he actually can play for. Because that's the big thing there. If he can have a whole 82 game season and plays great for the all 82 games, I think there's a conversation to be had there because we might potentially lose Vucevic. The Bulls might want to go a little bit younger. We obviously got Zach Levine that's going to be here for a long time. Maybe you could build a young core around him that can work together because DeMar is up there in age. But right now, I wouldn't do this trade whatsoever. I don't think it's worth giving up DeMar DeRozan for John Collins. But ask me in a year's time and see how it goes. Because I do think he'll be available in a year's time, to be honest. I do think that the Bulls might really consider going younger in a year's time as well. But all in all, it's really, really up to how John Collins plays. John Collins plays another season where he doesn't have a really healthy year. Misses most of the season. Or at least a lot of games, 30 games, stuff like that. 
I'm not sure if the Chicago Bulls should be looking at another one of those players where we potentially have Lonzo Ball that's going to be that type of player. And many people even argue Zach Levine's that type of player as well. So you've got two players instantly there that is going to miss time. So I wouldn't really want to add a third one to that list. So that's why I would say no to John Collins. I think he's a good player. I think he could obviously fit on this team. We do need a big power forward. It allows Patrick Williams to play his natural position as well as a small forward. It does make sense in that attribute as well. It's not a bad trade. I don't think this is a terrible trade whatsoever, but it's not a trade I would be doing right now. With this team that we have right now, I think we keep it the same and we try to move forward. But I'm going to end this video here. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you in another Chicago Bulls video. Ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful and safe day. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay tuned for more. Take care.